today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about the developer space and how you can utilize it to make sure that your developers are getting exactly what they need. So let's log in and I'll see you there. All right, now that we're logged in, let's go ahead and check out the developer space. So we're going to go down the settings tab on the bottom left. We're going to go over here and you'll see this developer space heading. So we see APIs, webhooks, and workflows. So we're going to go through each one of these. And we're actually going to dive into the workflows in the next tutorial because it can be more in depth, but I'll just show you what it looks like. So APIs over here, if we click on this, it's kind of cool because it allows us to set up a callback URL. So this allows us to track which lead did what. So we can set up an unsubscribe callback URL so we can configure that. If we go through here so we can set up a specific URL callback we want to go to and then we can set a post or a get and then we can set save. So this is essentially going to be our own callback URL that we can set to do our own thing and alert us when something happens which is kind of neat. So for example if someone unsubscribes then therefore we can figure out right away when someone unsubscribed and what happened to cause that. So if we just click save we're just going to configure it and all that is good to go. So over here, if we go back, we can look at webhooks as well. And so this allows us to create lead webhooks and campaign webhooks. So we can figure this for our mailing list campaigns and extract real time data, including subscribers, unsubscribes, date and time campaign was sent or delivered. So this allows us to pull a bit more insights if we're looking at tracking things on a bit more custom level. So let's say you have your own database that you want to trigger these events off of depending on what event happened, we can create a lead webhook over here. So this would be the name, we'd have the URL of the webhook, and then we would have the calls per hour. So set between one and a 1000 calls per hour. So you don't want it to go more than that, that is your limit. And then you can set the request method to be a post or a get. And this is basically just sending the information along with it. So you can set as many fields as you'd like here. So these are the different parameter names, these are the campaign fields, the contact email, and then you can set all the different parameters. So custom parameters or campaigns field, you can pull in all that information that we we do have in here. So this could even be useful to send back to say Zoho CRM, if you wanted to have your own custom system set up that you wanted to send back information, not using the internal Zoho system, then you could definitely go ahead and do that as well. So that's how you go ahead and set up a lead webhook for marketing automation. And then we can do the exact same thing for campaigns. So this is basically just letting us set this up. So we're being alerted that these campaigns are going up. Now this could be as simple as sending out an email notification or something along those lines. Let's say you have multiple clients that you're actually working with, and you want to send out a webhook to their email and just let them know that this thing has gone out. So there are various different ways to go about that. So let's just create a test one here. Let's go clientrick.co slash test campaign hook. And let's just say we want to set to 500 calls per hour. And we're just going to do a post and then we're going to save it. So this is undefined right now. And looks like there's an error on marketing automation side, and it's still there. So I'm going to have to inquire to Zoho support about that. But that is something that it does allow you to set up in the end as well. Now with workflows, there is a lot going on here. But it's important to note that this is basically like a Zoho CRM workflow. If you're familiar with that, then you'll be familiar with these. It's basically just setting up a automation piece. And we'll be diving into more of that as we go through. But then you can see the status of them, whether that's all of them, whether the active completed drafts, frozen, inactive, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So we can also see whether they're instant or time based, and we can arrange them in folders, so we can organize them properly. Now in this setting right here, we cannot create them. So in the next tutorial, I'll go through and show you how to go about creating workflows through your campaigns. Is that something that is very important, but this is where you'd come back to to manage all those different workflows and see all the ones you have created. So as always, please subscribe to our channel down below and like and comment on our videos. We want to make sure this content is getting out to everyone who needs it. And that helps us reach more people. So make sure that you do go ahead and do that. And also join us on our other social channels like Instagram and Facebook. We are building an awesome community and we can't wait to see you there. Bye for now.